Well, if they got mad at the whale video, they ain't seen nothing yet. Primates are a group of mammals that popped up not too long ago that actually gave rise to the most influential animal that this planet has ever birthed. That, that, that's, that's us. But what are they? Where did they come from? Ryan, how dare you say that I'm descended from those damn dirty apes. I threw my shit at a guy like once. Well, thankfully primates in general are actually a pretty geologically young group when we look at when they really started to blow up. Meaning that, like mammoths, it's a lot easier to get a higher resolution of their story. So let's see where we came from. I'm actually not going to go into the history of discovery this time, since, believe it or not, we've actually known about monkeys and that for quite some time. So I'd be here a while. So let's just get straight into the natural history. Believe it or not, despite what I said about the height of primate diversity cropping up pretty recently, the start of the primate journey goes back much further. Some phylogenetic studies have actually estimated the primate origin as far back as the mid-Cretaceous. But the earliest physical connection to our order is a proto-primate known as Purgatorius unio. A small, squirrely looking guy that grew to be about 6 inches long that lived 66 to 63 million years ago in North America in the Tullock Formation. As well as in sections just above the famous Hell Creek Formation living through the direct post-apocalyptic wasteland that occurred as a result of the famous asteroid that killed off the non-avian dinosaurs. This guy doesn't look very monkey-y, but to be honest with you, there aren't really that many mammals that didn't descend from some squirrely looking things. But what was the first true primate? Well, we see a few primate-like animals later on moving through North America and Europe throughout the Paleocene and Eocene with small plesiodapper forms showing features like fingernails instead of claws, before the earliest true primate cropped up in Africa around 57 million years ago, Altiatlasius, a small lemur-like animal from Morocco that lived an arboreal or tree-living lifestyle. Entering the Miocene, primates had already spread across Africa, Europe and Asia, with the Strepsirrhini or wet-nosed primates, which diverged quite early on in the primate timeline remaining mostly in Africa and parts of Asia, whereas the Haplorini or dry-nosed primates had spread much further. The earliest Haplorine fossils were from around 55 million year old deposits in China, where they possibly gave rise to semiaforms, in other words monkeys and apes, around 40 million years ago. And they clearly couldn't decide where to hang their hats because they then dispersed around the Tethys Sea across Asia back into Africa. Now this is where we see the two main groups of semiaforms with much clearer origins. The Catarines or Old World Monkeys developing in Africa, and the Platerines or New World Monkeys which continued their radiation and developed in South America. Now we'll come back to their development in more detail with individual groups soon enough, but first I want to touch on one feature that sets primates apart from all other vertebrates, and that's their intelligence. Primates developed exceedingly advanced cognitive abilities from a fairly early stage. Not only were their brains relatively large for information processing, given that we developed from nocturnal individuals, but social structure appears to have made quite the difference as well. Most primates have evolved to form social groups for their survival, and high gregarious levels are normally a sign of higher intelligence. In social groups there are ranks, communication, cooperation for task solving, and teaching and observatory learning. All of these aspects have the potential to form a positive feedback loop with intelligence. For example, hominids such as gorillas and chimpanzees have shown the ability to learn basic human languages, such as simplified versions of sign language. A better communication can mean better cooperation, which leads to faster learning, etc. We always like to say that humans are the only ones to do what we do because we were the only ones to figure out tool use. But plenty of primates do this, and not just for hunting. In the Winchester Zoo here in the UK, scientists actually filmed a mandrill stripping down and thinning a twig so it could use it to clean its toenails. Now the highest intelligence is seen in the Old World monkeys, most notably in the Great Apes, with the genus Homo, aka humans, showing this to the most extreme degree developing not only tool use and cooperation, but also abstract thought and the highly underrated ability that we take for granted, the ability to ask questions, the next stage of simple curiosity. 
So this intelligence allowed these groups to develop at incredible rates in densely vegetated areas around the world. With the old world monkeys radiating the most back out from Africa, developing the hominoids, more commonly known as apes. Across Africa and Asia, we see three distinct genera. Pongo, aka orangutans, Pan, aka chimpanzees and bonobos, and gorilla, a aka gorillas. Of course, if we look worldwide, we can include the fourth extinct genus of Homo, in which we are the only species left alive today. And that's not even mentioning the staggering number of extinct apes, such as Gigantopithecus, which I talk more about here. Now, the subject of apes is one that I could make a week-long video on if I wanted to go into the evolutionary story of all of the individual groups, or even making paleo profiles for individual genera. The hell, entire channels are made just on the study of the genus Homo, so it's a pretty big subject. So in the next coming weeks and months, I'm going to be touching here and there on various primates. What I want to hear from you in the comments down below is what kind of things you'd like me to touch on or what individual animals would you like me to talk about. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with as much as I look forward to catching you next time.